The project explored the perspectives of key public and private sector stakeholders regarding the outcomes and evolution of the free trade agreements that the Republic of Korea has negotiated and established in recent years with Pacific Alliance member states, that is, Chile, Colombia, and Peru. The research report we are presenting explored these dynamics amid the effects of COVID-19 pandemic in the world economy and provides elements for further analysis and discussion. Clearly, the future of this partnership is important in an uncertain global context. The Pacific Alliance is a regional integration initiative. It was established in 2011 and it seeks to advance the free movement of goods, services and people among these countries. One of the elements that makes it different from other initiatives is that it aims to serve as a platform of political articulation as well as for economic and trade cooperation with the Asia-Pacific region. One of South Korea's foreign policy priorities is to strengthen and increase trade and economic relations beyond traditional partners like the United States and the European Union. In this sense, it has demonstrated its interest and commitment to advance deeper trade, investment, and cooperation ties with the region in general and the Pacific Alliance members in particular. The same is true from the Pacific Alliance members' perspective. South Korea and the Pacific Alliance members' cooperation increased significantly at the beginning of the 21st century with the negotiation and the establishment of a series of free trade agreements. Currently, Pacific Alliance members represent almost 42% of Latin American exports to Korea and are among its top five Latin American importers. On the other hand, Korea's trade with the Pacific Alliance accounts for more than 40% of its total trade with the entire region. Currently, South Korea is already an observer member of the Pacific Alliance, but it is interested in becoming an associate member, meaning being an equal party. It constitutes a strategic foreign policy move towards the region. This new status will allow South Korea to strengthen relations with Mexico, which is the missing link to complete free trade agreements with all Pacific Alliance member states and to benefit from a significant network of existing trade agreements as well as um, to facilitate origin accumulation to promote global supply and global value chains. Therefore, improving trade, investment and foster cooperation as geopolitical allies will to a great extent depend on the perspectives and views they have of each other and the possibilities they see to maximize the benefits of already existing agreements. The report we produce presents the outcomes of a comparative study that considers the historical evolution of the diplomatic relations at two levels. First, the bilateral between South Korea and each Pacific Alliance member, and second, the multilateral level between South Korea and the Pacific Alliance as a bloc. You will find four chapters, Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Each one presents an analysis of historical data on trade, investment, and official development assistance. They also integrate the results of several interviews focus meetings and surveys with key public and private sector actors. Additionally, it presents the specific policy recommendations for the future of this relationship. Our findings suggest that the public and private sectors' overall perceptions of the relationship with South Korea are positive at the bilateral level, 
Official Pacific Alliance members' representatives show interest in Korea's economic development and export-oriented culture. Among private sector actors, the perception is positive. However, we found a perceived limited understanding of the Korean market among Pacific Alliance business sectors. In many cases, this has led to growing concerns regarding the implementation of the free trade agreements. Therefore, differences will emerge considering individual countries and sectors. These concerns lay mostly on the trade balances and the private sector perceivability to benefit from the free trade agreements. There are concerns among business sectors regarding trade deficits with South Korea in Mexico and Colombia, notably regarding the effects of bilateral trade in sensitive industries such as automotive, electronics, chemical products, and metals. Historically, Mexico and Colombia's trade balance has been in deficit with Korea. However, they have reduced in the last few years, mostly due to this country's currency devaluation against the US dollar. The concerns we highlight in the report are particularly relevant in the case of Mexico because it does not have a free trade agreement with South Korea, which poses a limitation to Korea's intentions of joining the Pacific Alliance as an associate member. In this regard, the report notices that a trade agreement designed between the two cannot be imposed on a skeptical sectors. Therefore, an open and inclusive negotiation is necessary to set the basis of a mutually beneficial trade relationship. In terms of advancement, the links between South Korea and the Pacific Alliance members are well behind their bilateral trade relationship, particularly regarding investment from the Pacific Alliance to South Korea. In terms of trends, investment is evolving from traditional sectors such as mining, mining, hydrocarbons, and energy towards more diversified areas. They include emerging sectors such as renewable energy. At the multilateral level, the report found that Pacific Alliance, public and private sector actors exhibit significant expectations regarding the possibility of Korea joining as an associate member. The same is true for South Korea, which will insist on its extended membership. Therefore, advancing this process requires two conditions to be met. The first, concluding ongoing negotiations between the Pacific Alliance and Australia, Canada, New Zealand and Singapore. And second, subscribing a free trade agreement between South Korea and Mexico, which can be quite challenging. Not only it is necessary for South Korea to become an associate to the Pacific Alliance, but it is also a way to address the concerns of different stakeholders regarding the future of trade relations. In terms of what is next, it will be valuable to advance policy-oriented research on four issues that, despite their importance, remain under study. The first, the negotiation process and prospects of South Korea joining the Pacific Alliance. Second, existing barriers to trade, investment, and cooperation. Third, exploring diverse forms of cooperation, including technology transfer, cultural, academic, and business exchanges. In general, initiatives and mechanisms towards a better understanding of these parties. Fourth, private sector participation, particularly investigating the role of small and medium-sized enterprises in non-traditional sectors.